Also, um, Yannick was originally an elite triathlete and then had a, a cycle, cycling accident at a training camp and he was then able not to uh, continue practicing as an able-bodied person and he moved into disability sport. He's, uh, star he started in the, his Paralympic career in biath biathlon and now he's uh, participating in paratriathlon. He has a master's uh, in sports science, which he achieved in 2000, and he works here at INSEPT, so I'm sure most of you know him, and we certainly know him from the paratriathlon ITU stage. Good afternoon, everyone. I will be making my presentation in French. Sorry for those of you who do not understand French. The purpose of my statement is to present how I got into paratriathlon and how I practice paratriathlon. I specify that I am doing short distance or sprint paratriathlon. So I'm headed to Rio. So I'm 40. I'm a, a gym teacher and I work at INSEP. And I trying to get my video set up here. So I started triathlon in 1989 when I was 14. That was at the beginning of triathlon at the time. I began at school because uh, school triathlon were the triathlons to participate in. So I raced for the first time in 1992 for France as a junior. The European and Junior World Championships were in the short distances without drafting. Of course, that has changed a lot since. In 1994, I got the gold at the Junior French Championship, and in 1995, I, was a, a, I got a silver medal at the European level. Once I left the junior category, there was not the hopeful category at the time. So I then moved into long distance because I had a weakness that was um, swimming and on a long distance. I, I liked long distance better. I liked the long cycle. I, I did long distances when I was a student and then I had prof uh, you know, uh, professional activity work, so I had less time, so I went into short distances. I participated in some of the CTU and the Grand Prix at the time, the French, what we call Grand Prix. These were races which perhaps are not as high level as they are, were not as high level as they are now. But I reached the podium twice in the individual races, so I did quite well. So I was uh, weak in swimming, but then I could make it up with the bike and the run. And in 2004, in training, I worked with Nicolas Becker, who's here, and David Boss. And we would go out uh, to the Alps to train on our bikes. And unfortunately, I crashed on my bike. I missed a turn. And so I had a bad accident on my bicycle. I had uh, some luck in the sense that, well, the only 
remaining problem I have now is a partial paralysis of the right arm. That means the nerves in the uh, brachial plexus that have been damaged. So I don't have a great range of motion in my right arm, but in daily life I can still use it. And it's okay for sports and for swimming. Well, so after my accident, I still had this desire to continue sports. I did a lot of rehab. And I began to uh, participate in triathlon, but doing the para triathlon version. So in 2005, just after my accident, I won the para triathlon championship. But at the time, these were short distance, no drafting. And quite frankly, there was not a, a great deal of density, or intensity rather, or density. This, this is something that did not motivate me. I, I was not that into it. I, I remembered how I was when I, before my accident, and I know that I couldn't compete against those I had competed against before, and it was a bit frustrating. And as I had said, I could not set what I considered high-level athletic goals, because to go to a world championship when the gaps in time are too significant, that did not really motivate me. So I was no longer getting a kick out of triathlon. I still wanted to do high-level sports, so I changed the sport I was to engage in, and I started uh, doing cross-country skiing and biathlon. Why cross-country skiing and biathlon? Because they are endurance sports, which I had practiced as part of my cross-training for triathlon fitness. And I think I had even been a uh, champion, even if it was, I think I won the snow triathlon in 2003 in France. I liked, I always liked cross-country skiing. I did a lot of it, so I said to myself, okay, get going in that discipline, in that sport. So I did that very keen, and I uh, became associated with the French Disabled Sports Asso uh, Federation, and I had in mind this attempt to make it to the Paralympic Games. And this is one thing that I was able to do. By 2006, I qualified for Turin in 2006. I was selected, but it was, as we were saying, it was 2006. I could not aim for a medal, but I was happy to be a Paralympian at least to participate and to have this new sports project in mind and to reach for, to strive for. I kept in mind the Vancouver 2010 games. So once the turn games were over, I was heading for, I was aiming for a medal in Vancouver, but I did not reach this, me this medal, this goal. Things did not go well. I had problems with my skis. I was very stressed. I did not reach that goal. However, I did win medals at all the world championships in which I participated. But in 2010, the IPC decided that triathlon would become part of the Olympic Games in Rio in 2016. So with this, this uh, the past that I had, I saw that, okay, paratriathlon is going to make its uh, debut at the Rio 2016 game, so I thought I must not miss this. This was back in 2010. It was a long way away, and I was wondering how things would pan out. It was in 2013 that I specifically 
uh, started focusing exclusively on paratriathlon. Why? Because I could have a Paralympic goal in mind, and I had the opportunity to go to the paratriathlon races, and I saw the development as compared to what had happened in, 20, in 2005, 2006. The classification system had been reviewed. There was more density in the races. And the competitions in which we participated, to which we had access, were not at all what I had expressed, I had experienced rather in 2005 and 2006. So this enabled me to become more motivated to, to really give it all I had in triathlon. So since then, I have borne in mind the Rio Olympics as my goal, and the uh, French Triathlon Federation has accompanied me. I have a training structure in Clermont-Ferrand, where I live, and I have uh, come, become associated with a swimming club. I'm part of a regular swimming club, and yes, I swim with only one arm, but I am swimming with people who have two arms and use their two arms. So this is, for me, very motivating, and it's enabling me to make prog progress. I have sparring partners also for running, and there are quite a few um, triathlon triathletes, rather, who train. So I'm well surrounded when I have training sessions. I regularly go to the training center of the um, Federation in Bouloris. This is an opportunity to be under the authority of Nicolas, the national coach, and we regularly have camps with the French team. We will have one once a month until the, the first paratriathlon event in South Africa in March course of 2016. So what's going on with paratriathlon? Well, we are totally integrated into the French Triathlon Federation. This is very different from the biathlon or cross-country skiing uh, events because we were um, governed by the French Disabled Sports Federation. So here we are part of the French uh, Triathlon Federation, so we are part of the trips that are taken. And I think it's important for us as para -tri athletes to be in contact with uh, elite and junior and hopeful athletes because we learn from them, we see how they work, they operate, but I think it's also important for us, but not only for us, but also for them, for triathletes who do not have a disability. They look at our approach toward training, how we adapt to situations and they realize or we realize that we all have the, all share the same pas passion and we share it and we have that passion in the same way as I had said earlier the differences between paratriathlon and Nordic skiing you can see in the camps because we have the uh, benefit of the triathlon federation, French triathlon federation, because in biathlon, I never had an opportunity to do a, a camp with the uh, French biathlon na national team. I had been on, at training sites with biathletes, but it was just a hap happenstance. It was not scheduled to be that way. So it was not as appealing. Competitions which are organized for um, biathlon and cross-country skiing are only for the disabled federations. And the um, World Cups are, and championships are only under the international para-athlete uh, or 
committee. So basically, it's it's just not the same thing at all. Because when you go to a paratriathlon event, you are at a world cup. On the same place, there's the same race, let's say, racing course as the uh, regular triathletes. So I think for paratriathletes, there, this is a big difference. I can tell you that it definitely motivates me, and uh, I definitely want to keep making progress in this sport. And then there are the Paralympic Games. I've already participated in them in the winter for uh, cross-country skiing and biathlon. Now I will be discovering the Summer Olympics, which is an even bigger scale Olympic game. I'm looking forward to it. I'm anxious to see or eager to see how it's going to be. So this is my presentation. So I wanted to just come back to the presentation made earlier because, well, when I heard what was said, uh, the presentation of, of the paratriathlete who was a long distance champion in um, paratriathlon in 2012, well, that's not at all what has happened to me. I have my training habits, my training load is not as high as Vincent Luis or Davidos, but I think I have a similar training problem. I swim, I'm part of a regular um, swimming club. I swim five or six times a week with one arm, so it's a bit tiring. But I have sessions that are like real training, swimming training sessions. Last year, I covered 30, er, 13,000 kilometers on my bicycle. I, I ride about five, six times a day. I unfortunately was uh, injured a lot last year in terms of running. So since the beginning of the uh, year, when I'm not injured, I have good weeks, good training weeks. And I definitely hope to be able to go through the season without injuring me. And I hope to get a medal when I go to Rio. With regard to the density of the current level, just to give you an idea, I'm in the PT4 category. We have usually issues with um, the upper limbs. Some people have, uh, you know, problems with l amputations of the lower limbs, as the case you had seen in my uh, disability ca category. There's Martin Schulz, who was a champion this year in Germany. He has one and a half arms to swim in, and on is on 200 meters with the four with the in the uh, relay is uh, 26 there's a young canadian who's a junior with the uh, with regular swimmers and has an under 15 minute reference for uh, um, 5000 so i don't know if the references that we have will give you an idea. That's what I wanted to share with you. Thanks. Thank, thank you, Yannick, for sharing your journey with us.